We're here with the NFSA's Fire Sprinkler Institute. We have an acquired structure where we're gathering data that will help us in the codes and standards arena. The Institute is here to try and research and develop things that improve the industry, which is part of our purpose that we were founded on in 1905, and that was to make general improvements and advancement in fire protection. And these full-scale tests and acquired structures allow us to demonstrate the effectiveness of sprinklers and to learn new things that haven't been tried before. Doing this here will allow us to work with our research partners at UL, FM, and NFPA Research Foundation in the future. It's a very common in all communities, a single-story rancher with a basement that's partially finished. We have a bathroom in the hallway with the bedrooms at the end of the hallway. So we started the fire in the bathroom to see what the hallway and the rest of the house remain tenable or untenable and to what firefighters faced. This bathroom is less than 55 square feet. So NFPA 13D, which is the standard for one and two family dwellings, does not require a sprinkler in this space. We have thermal couples at the eight foot, seven, six, of one foot increments down to the floor. And this is intended to give us the temperatures in the room where the fire originates. So this will be the probably the highest temperatures we get. We wanna see what our room is compared to our hallway, compared to our bedrooms, and compared to our living room down the hallway. So we can compare the heat and the effects of the fire inside the bathroom and as well as outside where people are trying to egress. In this home, we use the 13D fire sprinkler system with uh, residential sprinklers, pendant sprinklers in the hallway and in the bedrooms. So we have two sprinklers in the hallway and this hallway access is to our three bedrooms. So at the end of the hallway, we have two bedrooms and we have another bedroom on this side. So we'll do a thermocouple for our heat sensors right here at this sprinkler. And we have another line of thermocouples at our other sprinkler in the hallway. We wanna see what we have for heat and smoke and fire coming out of this bathroom and how it affects somebody's ability to egress past this bathroom. Our place of origin was the trash can uh, beside the vanity. Uh, we could see from the hallway. We had cameras in the hallway. We were watching the fire grow. The sprinkler closest to the bathroom activated and contained the fire to the bathroom. Uh, but as the bathroom continued to burn, we did see the second sprinkler operate down the hallway. However, at that point, there's no visibility in the hallway. The firefighters inside of the house during the burn could not see. It gave us a good idea of what the firefighters faced with water flowing. Had there been occupants in the bedrooms, they would have had to isolate themselves if they didn't get out. The smoke alarm activates really quick and within uh, a short period of time, the sprinkler operated. You see through, we let the sprinkler run for 10 minutes or more, and then we allowed the firefighters to go in and contain the bathroom. As you can see, this is the unsprinklered bathroom. We did have ceiling temperatures of about 1400 degrees. Uh, we did not have flashover. We had the window crack, but we didn't have it fail. And we also had the uh, exhaust fan lose the cover, but the metal housing for the most part stayed in place. We did not have any extension into the attic of the house. These residential sprinklers throw their water very high. So the water from this residential sprinkler would have been hitting this wall probably about four or five inches down. Same thing on this side, probably no, no more than a couple inches below that deflector. So by distributing its water nice and high and having this header above the door, in effect what we're doing is we're, we're creating almost like a water curtain here and we're absorbing a lot of that heat as it comes out of this room. With this sprinkler and this lintel or soffit, you can see the drastic difference between in the unsprinklered space and in the sprinkler space. At the height of the fire, even when we, we reached a temperature at the ceiling in here of 1400 degrees, these two sprinklers were all that operated. If we come down the hallway a little bit, this bedroom had a closed door. So this bedroom basically had a set of thermocouples just inside the door. No smoke damage, no fire damage, no nothing. We come down the hallway here, and then we had our two bedrooms 
Uh, and basically this bedroom, again, no sprinkler activation, very little heat, no smoke damage. And uh, you know, we were, we were pretty good down here in this bedroom. The fire did not extend out of the bathroom and the bathroom did not flash over. So it was a successful day for us to see uh, the experience that was faced in that real life scenario. The data is vital for us to have in the codes and standards world. We've always had a great partnership with NFPA and the United States Fire Administration in looking at data. We're simply building our data here before the incidents occur in the real world. The success of both days is phenomenal. And again, it proves the mission that we work for every day of the National Fire Sprinkler Association. That being to save lives and protect property through the widespread acceptance of the fire sprinkler concept. The National Fire Sprinkler Association would like to thank all of our partners here that make this possible. We'd like to thank the Ashland City Fire Department for the whole time period of permitting, uh, the training, and the fire apparatus that they sent, as well as the Pleasant View Volunteer Fire Department, the apparatus, the personnel they sent. And we couldn't do this without the great staff at NFSA. They've worked tirelessly on this project for months, and today it came together here in the street. And it's fantastic to see the outcome of these events. So a big thank you to everyone who participated, who made a difference here today. It's an honor to serve the National Fire Sprinkler Association and conducting this, these tests is going to make a difference to serve our members, to make improvements in the codes and standards arena, and to make an overall general improvement in fire protection to our country.